welcome back. <laughs> I had to, I had to take a quick coffee break. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Sun's going Good. down here in Berlin. Yeah, um, where I'm working, but uh, I'll have a sip of water then. If you if you've gotten all. Yeah, that's good. You're at the beginning. You're at the end. I'm at the beginning here. So. <laughs> it's kind of like what we're doing with Berserker. Yeah, I know. It's the <laughs> there's organic the, everywhere. The, <laughs> that's right. This is how is this what you started like this? <laughs> <laughs> that gives me some hope then. I, I uh, things, endings, things, kind of, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> what else can we say? I mean, if we looked at you know, it's it's interesting to like have the opportunity to kind of play in the sandbox of Berserker. You know, for me, it's been really fun to, you know, and when I say the comic book Berserker, it's like all of the characters, all the characters that hopefully will come, like the situations, you know, it's it's been fun to kind of play that like, what if, and how about, and what's next, and what does that mean? And be able to really, as we're going along, just kind of play. You know? Yeah, no, I, it, that's what the beauty of the character is. He he can't die, so we can kind of put him through whatever we dream up, you know, and have him kind of do whatever. One of, yeah, we try to kill him, like, you know, because yeah. we have that whole moment with like, well, how does he reanimate? Like what, mm -hmm. you know, if he burns, if he, if he, can he drown? What are the rules, you know? And that, you know, that idea, like I liked where we got to with that kind of chrysalis. Yeah. You know, and this idea that like he can be blown apart, but then whatever the forces are, which Diana and, and the scientists are trying to figure out, he reanimates, you know? And he- Yeah, just, yeah, that's- that was what was intriguing to me, especially as just like a analytically, when I think about him, I'm like, okay, well, if he blows up, then what happens to the pieces? You know, like, where's his teeth? Where do his teeth go? You know? And then... All right, that's where you went with Caldwell and the, and the cult of kind yeah, of like yeah. the hero of a thousand faces, like with B saying like, I know those, I know those faces. <laughs> yeah. You know, I am those faces, right? And Caldwell. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's cool. And I, that's what I, I just like the idea of like, cause you go to like an old Catholic church, they've got like those relics, like a finger of somebody or something, you know? And I like that idea of like somebody holding on to it. They find one of these teeth, you know? And then they, they, yeah. they like, that still exists somewhere. And somebody's like keeping it as like a holy relic or something. Like that, that is kind of neat. Like the little footprints he does leave, like he's not, He's not like Forrest Gump leaving these giant footprints everywhere. He's just like, yeah. but he's subtly leaving uh, pieces of himself, you know, like figuratively and literally. But um, I think that I like that about him. And then the idea of killing him. This Oh, that was one of the funniest things you came. This is totally you. <laughs> You're, I was like when he like going across the Atlantic or, you know, coming to America or whatever, whenever he does that. And then this idea of him he's like i don't like boats <laughs> remember yeah. and uh i was like why doesn't he like boats it's because <laughs> when what well, it, it sank and then he had to like walk across the ocean floor yeah, swim for a month him, sharks are eating him <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah it's like forever <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i like the idea that he's not scared of drowning it's just like it takes so long and it's so boring <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but, um, what else did we we recently? Uh, yeah, it's like how does he reanimate? Oh yeah, and the whole idea of like when he can't, when he when he's got this compulsion, what can he do to not get rid of it, but like kind of soften the sound, you know, like punching through trees or smashing rocks. You know, it's it's fun to be like you know to kind of invent again the what if, how about well, if this happens, what is that? And he's like, yeah, well, what if in the early, you know, he would go and fight a bear, which we're going to hopefully show soon. Yeah, issue uh, seven. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's just, that's where, I mean, I think there's a lot of, we're getting to play. And I think that 
humor and that also just wouldn't that be cool or that's interesting um so thank you for doing that no no that's it yeah. we're doing it together the, the uh that's the fun of it is i think we both like i think our what we want to see is similar and it's like we want to see him fight a bear like who and like everybody that would write this character would want to see him fight a bear you know and then i want to see him blow up <laughs> like let's what you know and then punch through somebody like those are i think we just i think that's what makes it fun is like we both want to see the same things and like then, 12 year olds i know i know <laughs> And then, but they would live yeah. a lot of life and then like okay but then how does he love and what is his relationships like and yeah yeah exactly we really spoke about the tribe and like should we should, should we give away or should we talk about like what happens in issue two three four like you know the parents and the tribe and how he was you know i mean yeah i think that a lot of that's in the first issue and in the first few issues we we get that so we can talk i think we can talk about that without spoiling it but yeah. Well, how how long was he gestating for? Two moons. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that scene where, like, when he, you know, he's been alive for like three weeks, or I mean, sorry, another moon, and he's like five feet, you know, four feet tall. Like that scene where he's like standing over the parrot's bed. Yeah. 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 And like no, it's, he, uh... it's introduced to the tribe and how he becomes, you know, we're just starting to get into this idea of like pre myth. You know, like when gods, the, our relationship to the gods and to our stories and to our myths has changed over time, you know, as science. Right? Not that we're not praying to gods. And deism, yeah, no, I, I think that's what makes it fun is starting from the beginning like that is, is we can take, it's like if everything exploded out of this, you know, all cultures and all different ideas about things, whatever, then I think in a way we can kind of take all of that and put it back in to something that it exploded out of. And so like kind of borrow mythology from different places, right. And different, and different ideas and different, like, I know we, it took a while to settle on like the, what do they wear? You know, what do they look like? You know, what, all of that stuff. And I think that's kind of fun, you know, to try to go back and like, what, what is it like back then? And we, and it's kind we of, know, right, right, we right. right, right. New right. civilizations, different kinds of humans. There's like, you yeah. know, like ancestry, and we can just we can, we're in the play, we're in the you know the sandbox again. You know, yeah, yeah, play. that's what yeah. I was thinking. What about dinosaurs? I didn't. We never talked about dinosaurs. They're too old. This is right, right. That's what I. I thought about that in the shower this morning. I was like, dinosaurs. But wait, those that's millions of years. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't have to worry about. It. There are no dinosaurs. I know. <laughs> yeah so we don't have to worry about that yeah i mean i think one of the cool things that came out too is is the idea of technology you know oh, how yeah, yeah. The character caldwell who i mean we're doing it now so it's still kind of we're still in it but yeah you know where did he transfer technology yeah yeah no i i think that's cool in like the just the idea of like basics of farming and planting and like like from the beginning of time, like early technology and him being kind of like a catalyst for spreading that, you know, is, I think that, I think the other stories that have like this, like a similar, like if it's, if there's a genre of immortal warriors, I don't think they, they don't really touch on that. And that's what I think I like about this is that we're, we get to explore all of that, you know, like yeah. ideas that people haven't really thought about. Hopefully. So yeah. We'll yeah. Some, we need some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. I and uh yeah, even in the first issue, I was I uh like the how his purpose changes over time too. Like at the beginning, mm -hmm. like his purpose for his tribe is like they pray to the gods and then then this yeah. being born, right? Yeah, and so then they prayed for a weapon. Yeah, yeah, and he and then so he appears and they just assume he's the weapon right and then he is the weapon and then that's his purpose right but but is it and then and that's kind of the fun thing is his father manipulates him right yeah the way that his yeah. father gets drunk with power you know where we get to have some of the um i don't know what we would call them the kind of folk tales stories uh morality tale you know where the father yeah. kind of 
gets drunk on his son's power and what started to become defense becomes offense becomes he becomes what he was trying to defeat before he starts and and be we name our character b um but um we call him b. well he has a name in the tribe but yeah it's and just I, how, how that can change and how i mean as we get into it like how other civilizations and people are going to view this weapon this dog of war you know? yeah no i i think it's interesting and if you compare like just comparing mythologies like this idea of like him being born to parents that he's born to and think like think about superman like superman was born to and like thank god he's born to parents that like raised him right and you know what i mean they weren't they didn't look around smallville and think hey we're gonna let's take over the united states <laughs> but in a way like like it's the bee's father it's almost a more it's a more human version of like like you like your first instinct is to protect what's yours right and now that that's protected what do you do well you look around and it's like oh well and then you think well what if you know i could have that or maybe if we had that or we'd be even be more secure if we have this safe. You know? yeah yeah how safe can we get <laughs> and, but, but i think that's such a more it's a more real version of uh how humanity can be is like people not being content wanting more you know and uh no i think that's that's what i think that's what makes this interesting yeah it is it's a morality tale yeah and and the mom is trying to no that's what oh i was looking up too i remember we were talking about his name like i don't uh like one of the early drafts remember i we had named him like ubuntu or ubuntu and i couldn't I was like, where did that come from? I couldn't figure it out. I looked it up this morning and there's a, I wrote it down so I could remember, but it's, there's a Zulu word that was Ubuntu, which is like, it kind of has multiple meanings, but one of the meanings is uh, like useful or like a tool. And then another version of it is uh, I am because we are, that's what it means. And it's like you, which is like, kind of like what he, you know what I mean? Like he, he's the, his purpose for them is like, or they're the, per, they're the reason he is, you know? And then, so like, that's kind of the mantle he's get, he gets put on him at the beginning. And then, um, so I like that idea because we talked about him being like, a, he's like a weapon or is he a tool or is he a, is he like a, is he just something to be used, you know? And I think that's, that's his character. That line you wrote, which is so great. And that was the last, but that was the last time I remember being happy yeah yeah right that that protects the tribe yeah because he had a he had a use he had a i think that's what it's what's cool about it is like you he's finding everybody feels better if they feel like they have a purpose you know and like yeah that's deep (laughs) it's pretty deep (laughs) good thing there's a bunch of violence in this thing (laughs) (laughs) I mean, for me, it's, it's, you know, I've spoken a little bit about in the past, but like the kind of collaborating and, and then, cause I've never worked on a comic before and it's been, you know, I kind of spoke about it being more similar than different to like what I've done working with writers and, and working on films is that there's, you know, different departments that kind of do their thing and collaborate excuse me come together to make this whole um and it's been it's been cool to start to see it you know as the issues are getting drawn and coming together and the color and the lettering and it's um it's it's really cool to see this dream this hope this ambition this story come to life and to go into this world um it's been really a gift yeah no it's been uh it's been fun like like a what a great story and it's cool to see uh it's cool to, to merge become to go from being like a fan to being like i was like oh we're, i'm gonna get i help you take this idea or whatever and make it into something that we can both be fans of you know and i think yeah. that's hopefully. been a hopefully yeah 
Yeah. We love it. We love it so far, right? I love it so far. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Well, then let's get back to work. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us. Again, if you uh, check out Berserker, we hope you enjoy it. Thanks to Boom Studios for the support and uh, helping all of this happen. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>